Drawing its roots from earlier pagan religions, Greek religion has had a huge influence on many Axial Age religions. These older pagan religions shared in their polytheistic nature with the Greek religion. It was not strictly polytheistic, as Zeus was generally accepted as the most important of the many gods that inhabited the Greek pantheon, so it was a Hellenistic religion. But also sharing with, with the shamanistic tradition, Greek religion incorporated element aspects of the physical earth, such as earth, wind, fire, and water, into its religion. Not only limited to the physical aspects, some of the more obscure gods had control over more abstract ideas such as Eros over love. Unlike Axial Age religions that came after it, Greek religion had no centralizing theme or holy documents such as the Bible, Upanishads, or Quran. Both the Mycenaean and Minoan religions played primary roles in the formation of Greek religion. On the island of Crete, Minoan civilization would set up the later Mycenaean Greek religion that would dominate Crete and much of what would later become Greece. Otherwise, Minoan religion also depicted mostly female goddesses, with the most important of which being the mistress of animals and the goddess of fertility. Other gods represented ideas such as city life, the underworld, and more. Minoan religion would be absorbed by the Mycenaean Greeks as their culture was overthrown. By around 1450 BC, the Minoan civilization was almost completely gone. Mycenaean Greece was very syncretistic in that they absorbed the gods of those they conquered. A good example is the Indo-European god Dios Pitar, Sky Father, who made his appearance in the Mycenaean religion as Zupatar. The other Minoan goddesses were also taken into the Mycenaean religion. From this meshing of Greek Mycenaean and Minoan religions would emerge the Greek religion. Greek religion wasn't your typical religion in the sense that there wasn't much believing going on. Everything in the religion was commonly accepted. The belief system was basically a cultural norm amongst them. Referring to the gods would be commonplace. There were no centralized documents for the Greek religion. The closest thing was the special place given to specific gods over various aspects of their lives. For instance, Zeus ruled the sky, Poseidon ruled over the sea, and Hades ruled over the underworld. Each god was able to hold some control over each other in their own dominion, save for Zeus, who answered only to the fates. The closest thing to a moral code the religion had was a general fear of committing hubris, which would be something that would anger one or more gods. They believed the gods would act in a retributive manner for these offenses. Of course, Greek society also had laws which shared in the discouragement of acts gods would look down upon, this meaning that they did not hesitate to conjoin matters of state with religion. For instance, oracles were often sought out by Greek kings and high-ranking officials for advice on important matters. The classic example of the oracles would be the one at Delphi. Oracles were thought to be able to interpret the messages of the gods. Her advice was often cryptic and could be easily misinterpreted. For instance, she once advised King Croesus that if he were to attack the Persian Empire, a mighty nation will fall. Of course, it turned out that it was his empire that fell. The Greeks would often have ceremonies to honor the gods or to seek their favor for a coming harvest or battle. These ceremonies would be held at altars or temples, which were constructed all over Greece. These would honor one god in particular. Rituals would often involve offerings of food and wine. Not uncommon were animal sacrifices, which were also thought necessary to gain the favor of the gods. The most well-known of temples would be Zeus's temple at Olympia, which would later be destroyed by the Byzantines in 426 CE. The story of Greek religion starts with Cronus, the youngest of the Titans. He overthrew his father Uranus with the help of his mother Gaia. From the slain of Uranus by Cronus, various gods were created from his body parts. Gaia was mad at Cronus, for he had re-imprisoned Gaia's children that they had sought to free in the first place. Cronus then swallowed all of his children as 
Winslow were born from his sister wife, Rhea. However, Rhea was able to hide Zeus from Cronus. Zeus, once mature, freed his siblings from Cronus' belly and led them in a battle against him. Fighting alongside Zeus was Poseidon, Hera, Demeter, Hestia, and Hades. The Twelve Olympians gained dominion over the world of the gods after winning their battle with the Titans. The other six Olympians were the progeny of Zeus. The Twelve Gods of the Olympic Pantheon were the most important gods in the Pantheon. Zeus was the figurehead of the Greek religion, king of the gods. He held dominion over the sky. Hera, the wife of Zeus, was the queen of the gods, and was also the goddess of women and marriage. Poseidon ruled over the sea. Demeter was the goddess of fertility and agriculture. Hestia was goddess of hearth and home. Aphrodite was the goddess of love and beauty. Apollo was the god of the sun and light. Ares was god of war. Artemis was goddess of the hunt and moon. Athena was goddess of wisdom and strategy. Hephaestus was god of fire and forge. Hermes was the god of commerce. The Greek philosopher Plato connected the twelve gods with the twelve months. He also added that the last month be set aside for Pluto, or the spirits of the dead. Later, Plato would also align the twelve with the zodiac, but it would exclude Hestia from the group. Lesser deities ruled over more abstract aspects, but they were very numerous. Some of the more recognized ones are Eros, who ruled over love, Pan, who was the god of shepherds, and Dionysus. Dionysus, who is the son of Aphrodite, is the god of wine and revelry. Dionysus will prove to lead a larger role on the influence of Christianity than most of the other gods. Other than the Olympians and the lesser gods, there existed three fates which ruled over all the gods, including Zeus. Clotho spins the thread of life. Lachesis measures the thread. Atropos cuts the thread, choosing the manner and the time of everyone's death. The afterlife in Greek religion was split between Elysium, Tartarus, and the common underworld. All three realms were ruled over by Hades. Elysium was where the virtuous were said to dwell, and was a place of peace. Tartarus was for the wicked, and was a place of torment. The rest of the underworld was where those who were neither virtuous nor evil would dwell. After Greece was conquered by the Romans, their religion was assimilated into the Roman religion. The Roman religion was nearly identical to the Greek religion. Many of the Greek likenesses made their way into the Roman religion, with the only change being their name. They retained much of their importance. Once Christianity started taking its way, Greek religion became virtually non-existent. Greek religion did manage to have some influences on Christianity. For instance, the common depiction of God was based on Zeus. Also, parallels can be drawn between Mary and Jesus, and Aphrodite and Dionysus, and their divine births. Wine also plays a major role in Christianity. Wine was also important to Greek religion, as they had their own god for it, Dionysus. Heracles, a son of Zeus who embodies strength, may have also influenced Samson's character in the Bible. From Minoan all the way to Christian religion, Greek religion went on quite a journey. It was one of the most fascinating Hellenistic pre-Axial Age religions, and its influences can be seen in religions today.